a look back at the last Forge FC contest. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. Here is Match and Review. My word, what a rocket. With Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Hey, Forge fans, Anthony Urcioli with you. It's the Forge Audio Network. This is the match in review. Forge FC, the opener of the Canadian Championship Tournament. 3-0 victory over FC Laval at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. And, you know, the game, the way it started out, Laval had a couple of chances. Now, coming into this, we, we wondered, right, where was Forge going to be mentally coming off an emotional match against Cavalry? They have another league match. Uh, on coming up the following Saturday. And this was kind of sandwiched in the middle, this Canadian championship tie against the club with really nothing to lose. You know, they're going to sit back and defend, rely on the counter. There was an equalizer. I don't know what, listen, last time I was at this stadium, I couldn't stop sweating. It was so hot. There were water breaks for the players. I'm walking up to the stadium on a Tuesday night and I'm getting hit in the face with ice pellets. I don't know what's happening, but the wind, the weird kind of weather conditions may have played into Forge's favor a little bit just because it was they couldn't get caught on that counter because the ball just it just wasn't cutting through the air. And for a club like Forge that relies on more of a ground game and, and more on ball movement, it just it, it worked into their favor even more so. Laval just could not get I mean, they couldn't get the counter going. They did have some opportunities early. Um, they just, that that little extra touch just wasn't there. The finish wasn't there. Um, so end of the day, it's Forge FC with a 3 nothing win. They will play the winner of the other Canadian Championship draw, which is Halifax and Ottawa, two CPL clubs. And Forge will meet one of those two in the second round of the Canadian Championship. All right. Noah Jensen picking up exactly where he left off. In the opening match against Calvary in this Canadian Championship draw, he opened the scoring in the 36th minute, a goal that was very similar to the one he scored against Calvary. It, it was a loose ball. He just he's in the right spot. He knows he his IQ, his the way he reads the field, he just always seems to be in the right position. And because of that, he gets opportunities on at the goal that other players might not get because they're just not anticipating the, the way Noah Jensen is, the way he sees the game. Perfect spot, right time, opens the scoring for Forge FC. Wubens Pasias with the assist. That was in the 36th minute. So Forge went into halftime with the lead. Noah Jensen, again, doubles that lead, 55th minute. Uh, this one, it was deflected, but it was a rocket, and it was labeled. So he gets credit for the goal. His second of the match, his third in the last, what, three days or so. So Noah Jensen delivering again, 55th minute, his second goal of the match. And then Wubens Pasias two minutes later on a penalty. We wondered, uh, just us, those of us watching the match, whether Jensen would get the opportunity at the PK to complete the hat trick. But it's very important to this club that its goal scorers, its strikers, get as many looks, as many opportunities to fill up the score sheet as possible. Uh, we saw it from Jordan Hamilton in, in the match against Calvary. He got the nod on the PK and he delivered. And that was a clinical finish. Pasias, I mean, this had clinical written all over it. No mistake. Head down, knew exactly what he wanted to do. Practically celebrating before the ball went in. He he knew he had it. And it was Pasias putting Forge up three Nothing. Things got a little chippy. Um, chippy in the sense that Laval just didn't really make any attempts at playing the ball multiple times. And as a result, we're handed a few yellow cards in the second half. But Forge FC making the most of their bench in a match like this. Jordan Hamilton came on. He replaced Taron Campbell. Uh, Kwesi Poku came on to replace Schwanier. And uh, Sissoko came on to replace Borges. So... The lineup, um, and that wasn't it, by the way. So Ashton Morgan eventually came off in the 76th minute. It was uh, Malik Abwabi Bellawu taking his spot. And then Noah Jensen gets a break. And it was Alessandro Hojab Rapport that came in. Big news, though, in this one. Alex Ashton the reigning defender of the year. He, he played the first match of the season as a center back. In this one, though, back in the midfield 
where uh, where he's used to it's his natural natural position. He's always happy to play. He's happy to play anywhere, but there's a little extra uh, smiles a little wider when he gets to play in the midfield. Uh, but it just speaks to the depth of this squad. All right, let's bring in our analyst, Alex Gange Rusik. Witnessed the match, and he joins us now to uh, to add some of his insight. Alex, it, it was a match where you wondered what Forge was going to look like on paper and what kind of lineup they were going to field, but uh, all of the, the big names were in. He wasn't treating this, you know, Bobby, as a match against a semi-pro club as, you know, maybe it's an opportunity to, to give some guys some extra minutes, and he definitely used all of his subs, but were you surprised at, at the lineup he fielded? No, not at all. I think something uh, Forge mentioned earlier this week that they really want to take the Canadian Championship seriously. I mean, they're saying that this is the last piece in the trophy cabinet, uh, you know, things like that. Of course, the regular season, actual the regular season trophy, of, of course, will be something they chase. But the Can Champ is a huge goal of theirs. So it's no surprise to see them go full guns ablaze. And I think this was a good test for, for Smear Notice in terms of just how he's going to be able to rotate his lineup. And it was just fascinating to see that he still did rotate a little bit. And, you know, guys like Taryn Campbell and Wubens Pasias, who came off the bench on the weekend, started. You know, guys like Kwasi Poku who get an opportunity off the bench. You know, you see Garvin Matusala pop up, which was good to see. Uh, and there were little indications that, you know, Bobby Smirnoff is rotating his squad. And I think it was just also uh, him showing the depth that he, him and his uh, staff have built for this season. Yeah, it's not often a player, you know, Alex Ashton he plays center back a couple days ago. If you, you know, 72 hours later or whatever it is, uh, he's playing midfield back where in his natural position. And a, a position that is, and we've talked about this, just, just stacked. I, I mean, the depth at midfield for Forge. So it's nice seeing Alex get back into the midfield, but I mean Noah Jensen, he we saw flashes of it in, in limited playing time relative to, to some of his other midfielders. But I, I mean, this is uh, not many are surprised at the leap he's already taken two matches in, into this year. Yeah, I mean it's a credit to Noah Jensen. Jensen's just showed a real just maturity in his game. I think we saw the flashes of talent last year, what he was able to do on the ball, but. Now he's popping up in great areas. He's finishing. I think both goals were really well taken. The first one in particular was a you know a top top finish for from a midfielder to to, to wrap your foot over the ball the way he did. And uh, I think we're just seeing the the little details start to come together for Jensen. I think you can tell that he's been learning from the Beckers, the Suzokos, the Hojiabukors, and uh, it's super exciting to see what his ceiling is because yeah, when everyone's healthy, he might be the fourth fifth best option on paper, but. A, that will change if he keeps us up, and B, that's good depth if that's the case. It, I, I mean, look, I, I don't know, you know, the, the players aren't going to complain, coaches aren't going to complain, but um, let's just say the weather here, it, it was scorching hot over the weekend. There was water breaks. Tonight, it was I was getting hit with ice pellets on the way to the stadium. I think it was around four degrees. Those are that's a drastic jump in temperature. And I guess it's very Canadian Premier League to, to have those kind of drastic shifts. Uh, but for a club that played, you know, I mean, the training camp started February, so they were playing in the winter. Then they went to Costa Rica. So I guess they're used to those extreme shifts. But how how does that impact a match when I know Forge doesn't do a ton through the air? They like a ball possession game. They like to make their runs and, and to, you know, play it on the ground if they can. But how does that impact the game when you show up to work and you're getting hit with ice pellets before a match? Yeah, and it's something to, to consider. I mean... I think the big thing certainly is fitness this early on in the season, especially you play, you know, you go on training camp, it's warmer, you come back, it's a bit colder, then you get the sun and you think it's summer and then you get the cold. I think the big thing you see is, is just, you know, injury risk. It's mm. different ball game warming up when it's minus 20 degrees. You really have to be diligent uh, with your steps, but maybe when it's a little hotter, you, you can get away with a little more, just your, your muscles get looser naturally course you have to then watch out for cramps so it's you know there's no perfect the perfect weather is probably 10 11 15 degrees which you usually get in the fall uh but as for forge i mean in terms of the playing style i think it is an advantage uh, i think laval one thing that you could really tell is that they wanted to be a bit more direct and there were times where they'd throw these long balls that would get stuck in the air and forge weren't really falling into that trap i think we've seen them play in this sort of circumstances uh before so it's definitely something it's a bit of an advantage i don't think it's going to be one that's incremental but you know it's something little things where teams might be forced into playing a certain way and forge they know the elements they're comfortable with it 
And that's just the beauty of a home field advantage and knowing that, you know, Tim Hortons field is a bit of a wind tunnel in, in certain aspects so that when it's windy, mm-hmm. you feel it as you did on, uh, at least over the broadcast, I'm sure you can confirm in the stadium. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now Forge will play the winner of uh, Atletico and Halifax in their uh, Canadian championship tie. Uh, it's unfortunate because we are going to see, uh, I guess, two CPL clubs out within the first uh, couple of rounds. But realistically, uh, for a CPL club to win this tournament, and and Forge has come close, uh, they were you know a, a PK away from getting there. Uh, the format was obviously a little bit different, but just just realistically, when you saw the draw and you saw the ad, just how many CPL clubs would be participating, realistically, did you think there was a chance that a CPL club could take this tournament? I mean, it's something where it feels like we're going to be closer than ever. I think it's something where, yeah, you look and I think your Vancouver's and certainly your Toronto's look to be the favorites and, you know, never can count Montreal out. But Forge is one of those teams that feels like they can make some noise. The nice thing is they can kind of ease their way in this competition. They get the semi-pro team this week. They get CPL next time out and say if they do win that, then they, you know, face an MLS side. So at least there they can get up to speed and they've, historically done relatively well against MLS sides last year mm-hmm. a side where you know they went to Montreal and Montreal was just you know really hungry and it kind of kick-started their excellent season so it's just bad timing uh, on that so yeah I think I think it's one where uh, there's certainly a chance I think given Forge's depth that's probably the big one because they're, they're going to be able to to keep focus on CPL keep focus on Canadian championship and maybe don't get their resources or attentions too stretched uh, one way or the other so why not? I mean, ideally, if they had a draw like Pacifics or Calvary's, it's all, you know, it's something where you'd have an immense amount of confidence, but it's still one where you'd fancy their chances at least going into a, mm-hmm. you know, a Toronto or Montreal game. And then from there, if you make a final, it feels like anything could be up in the air. And, you know, this, this tournament, to be a CPL club to win this tournament would be an honor in itself. But that extra path to the Champions League and, and Forge has made no mistake. I mean, that is what they have their sights set on. And, and I would imagine it's, it plays into it. I, I mean, that's an extra, that's not just, a you know, an extra little thing tacked on. That's a huge, huge reward at the end of this tournament. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, why teams take it so seriously especially the mls teams it's one of those where for the cpl teams you can know that for the most part you're not getting mls teams at the worst because they know the value mm-hmm. of a champions league spot i think you saw it last year with vancouver they hadn't been in a while and you know every game no matter if it was valor york cavalry and then tfc in the final every game was an a team every game meant a lot and i think that's you know huge for for you know cpl team because at least they're going out there and they know they're getting the, the, their best and it also incentivizes them to, to go out there and and push and you know I, I think that those Champions League spots are just huge because the exposure the level of competition uh you know just getting on those sorts of stages are, are big for some of these young Canadian players and uh it's certainly something that that, pe- that teams consider but it is also nice that starting this year the CPL teams do get that added bonus in uh in the league play so they're not going conc- or I guess Canadian championship or bust just to get those spots but certainly an incentive yeah, absolutely. You have your ear to the ground uh, with the sport in this country. The uh, This league's reputation, I'd imagine it's grown quite a bit. Even just, I mean, domestically, you know, the, the league had saw its biggest attendance numbers, at least compared to the year before uh, in that first week of the season that we just had. So it's obviously, it's gaining some traction. What about internationally? Is the CPL, are you noticing a pretty consistent uh, rise and at least the reputation and the notoriety of this league? Yeah, I think there, there's a lot of little things that, that are helping. I mean, um, we, we look at little things such as the league does a great job of tracking stats and, mm. you know, broadcasting yeah. games. Uh, you know, those sorts of little things might be taken for granted. But one thing I read a lot is, I think some scouts, for example, they love to learn more about certain leagues and there's just no footage. There's no data. Interesting. And it's nice to know that, say, with the CPL, we'll use a Forge example. Say Noah Jensen's having a hot start to the season. He keeps this up. Scouts overseas can look at, at a team like Forge. Like, oh, this Noah Jensen. Okay, I can watch all this footage on him. Oh, I have all this advanced data on him without even ever ste- stepping foot in the country. And I think little details like that is why you see moves like a Victor Latoury uh, you know, from Cavalry go over to, to Scottish League or Dominic Zator on, on York, make that jump up uh, to, to, to Poland. And then those little 
build jumps like that. So I think it's something where, look, there's still a long way to go in terms of getting that overall reputation. I think it's going to take a while for when people see Canada automatically think, oh, there's a Canadian Premier League there. And, you know, the same way you look at England and France and mm-hmm. even the U.S. with MLS. So, you know, the, you, of course, they've, they've been around for a lot less than some of those leagues. Uh, so I think there's a lot of work to do in terms of reputation. That's going to take doing well in Champions League. That's going to take continually exporting players. But there are little details that help. Also, just consistent branding of the league. Uh, you know, little details like that will will help it grow internationally because people forget the the importance of some of those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lights started dimming around me, so I think that's my cue to. I think someone's it's my curtain call. But are you out west, by the way? I am for for this. One. I, I I can see the sunshine. I'm I'm a little bit little bit jealous right now. So, <laughs> no, enjoy enjoy that sun, and I'm I'm positive we'll, we'll talk to you again. Awesome pleasure as always, Anthony. All right, thank you. Your final, once again, from Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton, the opener of the Canadian Championship, Forge FC with a 3-0 win over FC Laval. They will meet the winner of Ottawa, Halifax, in that tie. And then Forge back at it, quick turnaround. It'll be their third match in a span of eight days. The next one happens on Saturday against... Halifax might be a preview uh, of the second round of the Canadian championship. We'll see. Uh, But Forge hosting Halifax on Saturday at four o'clock at Tim Hortons field, forgefc.ca slash tickets to get yours. All right. I'll be there. We'll see you there. This has been Match in Review with Anthony Arcioli on the Forge Audio Network. For the latest on all things Forge FC, subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.